Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, November 5th. Hopefully, um, you're surviving the first few days of this open enrollment for the under 65 market. I can tell you it's been a whirlwind here, and I'm sure that you're experiencing the same issues. Um, I wanted to allow for a, a, a pretty good, decent amount of time for the open forum, because uh, I imagine you have a lot of questions, but I did try to at least kind of get all the questions, anticipate the questions um, from some of the issues that we've been experiencing. So as always, if you're new to the format and you want to ask a question, you can either raise the, your little hand icon um, with the, uh, by clicking on it on your control panel, or you can just type in a question on the question box, and uh, I'll read that aloud, and hopefully we can all learn from each other. So let's just get right into it. Um, this is a recurrent theme. Please check your login credentials for Cat Blue Cross. They do have a very, very nice site. Um, now I can tell you that they just announced uh, yesterday that they are having some issues with the um, redirect from um, their portal to healthcare.gov, but they are working diligently to correct that. So if you are experiencing those issues, um, you know, I, I would love to say just let us know, but there's nothing we can do about it. I'm just letting you know that they're working on the issue and uh, just be patient with that. Um, if you do have Capital Blue Cross uh, applications for the remainder of 2015, um, then certainly you um, then can just, you know, business as usual, send in that paper application and we can take care of that. And for 2016, you can still submit a paper application to URL, and we will enter that online. Um, the, the, you know, we talked a lot about the fact that the FFM, healthcare.gov, is going to have a broker-specific number that we can call, and hopefully they would recognize us for the, the role that we, we play in this industry and understand that we have the authority to talk on behalf of our clients and ask questions on behalf of our clients, but the number that they released is very disappointing to say the least. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into it because I don't know that any is any of you are even going to use it. But you would have you have to listen first of all to the CCIIO webinar to even get the number, and once you have the number, it's only going to be used to um, help agents and brokers uh, with their user IDs for the FFM registration and training and any issues with the Marketplace Learning Network, provide your national producer number, reset passwords on the CMS portal, not healthcare.gov portal, um, and login issues at healthcare.gov, um, and also the healthcare.gov website issues. So it's pretty much a bust, in my opinion, pretty much useless. I do appreciate that Nehu made made the push for this number, and we hope, I hope, next year or maybe even down the line shortly that there, you know, the calls uh, will change, that we can actually get things resolved that we need to get resolved. But until now, I say it's a bust. Um, I also mentioned the CBC uh, redirect issues. And uh, just be mindful of that. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the networks and where they apply. Um, we are getting a lot of questions, and I know it's confusing folks, so I thought it was important to kind of spend a little bit of time talking about the networks. So if you see, the, this is the 21 county service area. These counties in purple are the value HMO area and the value HMO is on exchange only. And what it means is if you sell a plan to a resident of one of these counties, let's just say Lebanon, and they have a provider in Schuylkill County, traditionally that would be included in the network in the 21 county. However, there is no coverage within the 21 counties for the folks that are on the value HMO on exchange. Um, so just be mindful of that. There is coverage outside the 21 county area, but unfortunately not 
in the 21 county area except for these counties um, that are highlighted. Another graph that kind of explains this is um, this chart here. So for the PPO network, it is offered off the mark or on the marketplace in all 21 counties, and it's offered off marketplace, of course, in the 21 counties. No referrals are needed, and it has out of network coverage. For the HMO, again, it's offered off exchange and on exchange, off and on, and it's offered in these counties. Um, off market, it's in the 21 counties. Again, again, out of network is emergent and urgent care only. And then this, this is the value HMO, only available on marketplace, not off. And um, you can see that it's, it's referrals are required as with the other HMO and it's for emergent or urgent care only. And the Care Connect program um, is only available in Cumberland, Dauphin, and Perry counties. And that's available um, off exchange only. And that is their program that centers around Pinnacle Health Systems and Hershey Med. So all of these um, details will be included in my newsletter. And uh, just be mindful of that. It's probably a good, a good resource for you. And let's see. You know, the FFM search, the next bullet point, um, you needed to make your decision and get your certification update to the producer world for at Aetna.com by the 30th. And unfortunately, if you've not done that, you're kind of stuck. Um, unfortunately, if you didn't choose URL as your GA, then we can't assist you with these products for 2016 unless you're a newly licensed agent, then they at least give you the ability once you license to choose a GA. Uh, but for those of you that were existing in contracting then, and didn't choose URL, unfortunately, um, we're not going to have the ability to assist you with those programs. Um, I once again ask, uh, just remind you, the household income and household size, it is on our website. If you go to urlinsgroup.com and under health plan options and product information, there is a whole section on FFM forms and links. And I think that you can use all of these things as, as a resource. So that's it for today, except for our open forum. We will have a webinar next week as well. Um, I know it's, we're all busy, um, but I still think it's important enough to um, just make sure that I'm providing some information to you and, and help when you need it. So let's get right to the uh, questions. And Tim asks, did Highmark ever hold a 2016 product session like they did last year? They did not. And Dave asks, so is 800-318-2596 still the number to call the FFM? That is the number, Dave. Unless you sit through a CCIIO webinar, I don't have the agent-specific number. So that's the one you can call. And Margie asks that she she said she joined late. Please review Capital HMO Market in Lancaster County and evaluate off exchange, not, not value. Um, Margie, I will send you the chart. Um, so it's going to be pretty, pretty clear. Bill's asking what the Aetna Commission payout is. And that's not an easy answer either. It's going by tiers. Um, and what they're doing is they are counting. They started counting as of 11-1 and will count till January 1st your combined Aetna and Coventry business. You need at least five lives or they're going to um, essentially terminate your contract. And then based on the number of lives you have is the commission structure that you will be placed in. Um, I can send you that information and um, get that to you, Bill. Got to write these things down because Otherwise, I'll forget. And let's see. Scott asks, is Highmark soliciting, soliciting customers direct with options to replace canceled plans? Must we broker this business to get paid? Yes, they are. Um, there are clients that do not have any brokers they are writing out to. Um, you would need to um, either replace, rewrite, and I would suggest an authorization form as well. 
Now keep in mind you will get paid, but you're going to get paid renewal commissions if they're already on Highmark. And the renewal commissions, Scott, are $4.80. It is 80% of $6. So that's what you're going to get. Um, Jay says, um, he sent me an email regarding healthcare.gov client password reset issues. Did you get it and how are others dealing with it? Um, I, I don't have the email, Jay, and I don't know how others are dealing with it. I would start with the FFM number and see if they can assist you. Um, Lori asks, are we going to be able to upload our applications to the URL site again because the dates need to be updated to do this? Um, good reminder. I will make that happen, Lori. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Tom saying, if someone purchases an off exchange product, will they be eligible for any subsidy when they file their tax return for 16? No, Tom. In order for anyone to qualify for a tax subsidy, they have to originate that application through healthcare.gov. Even if they don't take any tax uh, subsidy or advanced premium tax credit um, through the marketplace, they can settle up when they pay their taxes or file their taxes. And if they file or if they go outside the marketplace, then whether they're subsidy eligible or not, it, it doesn't matter. They are not going through the right channels in order to collect that. And Dave asks, is Capital Blue Cross generally the best buy for our customers? And I would say yes. They have a really nice silver plan, the silver 0 0.0 and 0.0.10. Um, they're both silver plans. Those seem to be pretty popular already. I can tell you rates are, are terrible for everyone. Um, you know, rates really did increase. Uh, capital certainly very competitive against other carriers in the marketplace for 2016. But when you do a comparison of last year versus this year, the rates are, are just horrendous. And Lori says, could you review hospital systems for HMOs, for example, um, Keystone Health Plan? I don't think Lehigh Valley is in the, net, in, the, in the value. It's not. And Valley Preferred, Aetna, I think, no St. Luke. I don't know that. Um, I'm going to find that out. I'm going to save that question <laughs> so that I can get back to you. And just a second, um, one last question here. Charles says, will Geisinger pay renewals for 2016 if an existing member changes plans for 2016? Will this be a new sale that is not payable or still count as a renewal? It will count as a renewal, and the fact is that they are paying on renewals. Now that's different than NEPA. NEPA is not paying on new business or renewals. Geisinger is not paying on new business, but they are paying on renewals. So if you have a Geisinger to Geisinger, even if they change plans, it's a renewal and it's commissionable. Um, Bill says, will, when will CBC be releasing individual plan outlines showing their coverage? They're all on the site, um, Bill, on their Cap Blue Cross site all the SBCs, and there are a lot of them. Um, they do have a brochure with a, a high-level outline of the plan, and then um, also on our website, there's uh, like a, a rate guide, and that's pretty much it, other than going onto the website, their website at catbluecross.com and getting, um, getting those SBCs. Brandy says, when will the rates and plans be on the quoting system? I just talked to them today, Brandy, and this is the EVIC system. They're working diligently to get those rates, and they're hoping by next week. But, um, you know, that's the most I can say. I know Judy and Katrina are just swamped with quotes um, because we're trying to assist as much as we can. So if you do have a need for the quotes, you can either if it's a capital plan, you can log into Capital Blue Cross and do the quotes, or you can have us do the quotes. We're happy to help. Um, I know it's an inconvenience, but it does happen every year, unfortunately. They have to load those rates. Nate says, Kaiser only has 2015 for income as an option. Are the numbers for 2016 still the same? And can you send me the Aetna Coventry Commission? Um, no, the FPL has changed. and. And um, I'm trying to get that chart, but it is updated on healthcare.gov. I'm not sure why it's not on Kaiser. 
and I will send you the commission schedule as well. And Barbara says, sorry, just logging in. What is the subsidy or income guideline for the subsidy? They have to be at 400% or below the federal poverty level, Barbara, and I don't have those rates yet or the, the um, FPL rates yet. Um, but they are on healthcare.gov. I just have not created the same sort of chart that I did last year. It's just a time constraint issue. But it is out there on healthcare.gov. Mike says, group rates are still higher than individual plans. Would it be less expensive for a small employer to add a group plan instead of bonusing employees to pay their own? Um, I think there's a lot of advantage to that, Mike, and I do see a lot of groups kind of transitioning that, that originally dropped coverage for individual plans, and they are definitely looking at transitioning back to group for many reasons. You know, group is um, a little bit more stable, if you, if you will. Um, it certainly offers the employer those tax savings because it is a business expense. So we do see we do see a lot of that, and I expect the closer we get to 2017, we're going to see even more of that. Um, so I, I do think it is an advantage, but not for every group. Um, but you know, again, you have to just kind of figure out if it's a, a good option, and it all comes down to rates and what they can write off. Jay says, can you please send me the 2016 FPL chart? I wasn't able to find, or could you just send me the link and I can download it? All right, I don't, I don't have it yet, but I will look for this and try to get it out. And let me see, just writing down all my follow-up because seriously, I forget now. And that looks like about it. Um, so that kind of ends our questions. Guys, I really appreciate your patience. I know we're all taxed to the max, and um, I appreciate you still tuning in. And if you do have questions, certainly count on us to, to get you that answer. I just would ask that you be mindful that we're doing the best we can, and probably our response time is not quite as stellar as it was before this madness started on November 1st. So um, as always, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you choosing URL to do your business and uh, your partnership. So thank you very much, and I, I wish you all a great day in spite of all the challenges and, and most definitely a great weekend. So enjoy your day. Bye-bye.